What's up, Chris Crone here. Today we're actually diving in on this conversation of real estate and whether you should be diversifying. I mean, look at what's happening in the market. The stock market's going up. Is real estate at this point a smart play? Is it a stupid play? And if you can't get access to it, what's the best way to do it? Cause we're gonna be So I am joined today by Stephanie and Christopher. They are two of my brand new real estate partners. We've only been at it for a couple months, right? Right. Right. And um, I, I wanted to kind of hear a little bit about their story because we met through YouTube. But um, before that, you guys have always been, you're young, four kids, but also really financially smart. How did that whole financial smartness kick off in the first place? I would say my mom was the, the checkbook holder as a kid, very avid on not overspending, you know, getting fees taken out by paying with money you don't have. It was always evident um, that money was a conversation between my parents and then before my brother and I each graduated high school, they showed us, here's a checkbook, here's how you balance it, here's how much money you that we put away in your savings account since you were a little kid. So you're telling me that you guys actually had parents that gave you, you got some financial training. And my yes, dad taught us to training. like dream and like look forward and strategize. He's always studying and learning. Really? And kind of like just taught so you guys me have, to you guys keep have a lot looking. In common. Right. So this is kind of cool because there's a lot of people that, you know, when they get married or when they come into a relationship, it's always fun for me to watch what's the financial dynamic. A lot of people, their parents really didn't teach them a whole lot because what we really do is we're speaking far more loudly with our actions and our words. And so you, you look at it, and let me just kind of ask you, curious, would you say that your, your parents were financially behind, average, or ahead? I think that they were ahead. Um, they probably just had a mortgage and maybe a little bit left of a car payment. Okay. But they were always thinking, what would we do five years down the road? Awesome. And what about you? My dad's always been a dreamer and a planner and a studier and a financially he's tried things. Behind or I'd say average. You'd say average? Yeah, we've always had a home and food and we right. had our needs met. Because a lot of people watching this that are like, yeah, my parents didn't teach me squat about money. Or if you're young and watching this, you might be, hey, I need to ask my mom and dad, what should I know about money? Today, though, we're going to accelerate this conversation and talk about kind of a core transition that you guys went through. I know that you did some Dave Ramsey several years ago. You've been, sounds like you've been good with trying to get ahead by you know, manage my debts, pay things off, be fiscally responsible, save money, put money away for your retirement. And yet something happened in the last couple of months that led to you bought your first property last week mm -hmm. and have another one under contract and now with plans for buying more, what happened? Well, during the summer, I just started, um, I'm a commission salesman. I started making less money and you know, nothing had changed, you know, in the work that I was putting in. and. It, it freaked me out. It, I got scared, and that's a feeling that I normally don't have for finances because, you know, we have savings, we have investments, we have a good retirement, we're financially sound, our house is paid for. Yeah. However, yep. we don't have enough. By the way, I, I want you to listen to what they're sharing right here. Worked so hard, been such great savers, even got the house paid off at such a young age. I mean, what a huge accomplishment. But it is amazing that sometimes we don't level up our game plan until something bad happens. Like for me, many people know my story. It was when, you know, me and my brand new wife had our first financial hardship and I didn't know how to pay the bills. And I was like, man, I do not want to disappoint this woman. I have to kind of find a way to dig deep and find a solution. Right. It's amazing how sometimes pain becomes the reason or the impetus why we do something. But even more powerful as you're watching this, don't wait for it to hit the fan before you say, wait a second. Maybe I should find a way to be motivated, but not from a place of fear. Correct. I always like to try to get ahead. You know what I mean? What's your story in all this? My story on this is like, we're still doing fine. Let's make our plan for when that stops so that we're still fine. You're smart. You're able. Yeah. You're awesome. Responsible. There's no reason why we have to, like you said, wait until everything is gone. Like, we'll just plan for the next phase of income. So... Was it a pretty big switch to go from, because really I want to talk about diversifying in real estate. I know you guys have somebody in the stock market. You've clearly paid off your house. And um, I think a lot of people know how I've used some of these assets, right? I mean, I look at the stock market and I'm like, okay, if you're playing that game, then you're going to ride out the highs and lows and hopefully average 10%. If you're getting your house paid off, that's a lot of money to sit in an asset that produces nothing. Mm -hmm. But it provides some people a, like a peace of mind, kind of like if I lost my job, at least my bills aren't going to be as high as they would be otherwise. But really, at some point, I really feel that for people to reach the financial levels that they want, 
we have to exit the world of single digit investments like, like 401ks and IRAs. We have to find a way to get true double digit returns. How do I make 15, 20, 25, 30% on my money? We're finding that right now with real estate. Do you remember on that first deal we bought what the projected ROI looked like on it? I think it was like 31 and a half, 31.6. By the way, just so you guys understand my reaction, when I, when I see an investment that I believe in that has a 10% return, I'm like, uh, 15%, I'm like, uh, 20%, I start getting excited. 20% for me is like, hey, I can double my money every five years. Now that's exciting to me. But when I hit 25 or even 30%, I get, dude, I get freaking rock star excited if it's an investment that I believe in. So. Obviously, this is very different than some of what you've been doing before. How do you feel about the property that you just bought last week? It looks like a nice place. <laughs> it's a really nice it's house in Florida. In Florida. Right? It's a nice looking yeah. house. Hot and sticky and alligators, so I'll stay in California. The but hot, the house looks great. Yeah. Um, yeah. I think someone would actually want to live in it. It's definitely a place that I'm proud to own. You know, one of those uh, houses. Totally, 100%. You know? So obviously, our team, you know, found the house, researched, yeah. did all the fix up repairs, management. Mm -hmm. Are you really like hands-on kind of people or more hands-off kind of people? Do you like the way this arrangement is working so far with having a team do all the work for you? I like the hands-on aspect of I want to learn and I want to mm. know and I want to have the skills so I just know what's happening hence, and I can make decisions. Right now. We're in studio, but really you guys are at our four-day immersive event called Unleash Your Financial Destiny, link below. By the way, curious, how are you enjoying the event so far? It's been really fun. Yeah? Yeah. Really fun. It's good for us. It's just like kind of a marriage retreat in a sense. Good for like, you guys. Seems like it was really hard to leave town. Like yeah. we have four kids and they all have kids, their right? stuff. And yeah. like so many people at home, thank you if you see this. Like <laughs> nice. um, this has been good for us. It's like dreaming together again, like really like just taking time to just be like, why are we doing this? Yeah. And everything we're giving it, we believe is from the Lord. And it's our job mm -hmm. to distribute that Good stewards be good stewards of it. It's like it's all for the purpose of spreading his love. So it's like, man, if he's given us these resources, it's like yeah. we've got to be really sure what we're doing. So I love so. that. That's great. So you've done some good fact checking. Oh yeah. So it was been really fun to just be like, okay, what is our? Like, well, what I mean, are you we were telling me this? before we turn <laughs> like, on the camera. I was like, you're like, go research this guy. Find out. Find. Oh yeah. And it was like but, after hours of research, what did you find? Like. Uh, <laughs> you once got a, a ticket for not wearing a seatbelt. So that's the discerning part. Like we've got to be careful with this stuff because this is like this yeah. is not our stuff. This is his stuff. It's like we have to like no, he's given us the responsibility to be wise with it. No, I love that. That's so. really really beautiful. So let me ask you this. So because we're talking about diversifying in real estate, mm -hmm. other than your own home, you now have bought your first property. We've got a second one under contract, so you're going to have two homes here probably within the next couple of weeks. Um, where do you think you go from here? I think we want to buy more. Yeah. Yeah. I mean. We definitely want to get renters in those two properties ASAP. Like have that yeah, like there is a payment it. coming December 1st or something like right, that. Yes. But I'm sure I have no problem. Yeah, it's all if good. I, and if it's going to be fine. I want to say this because you're brand new investors. You know, I love working with brand new investors because the reality is we like to fantasize and dream about good things, but sometimes we fantasize about the worst case scenario. Totally. And it's like, what happens if the home never rents? Or it's what if I rent the house to someone that like beats the trash mm -hmm. out of it? And you know what? Any of those things can happen. So the best thing we can do is actually be prepared. Right. You know, one of the things that we do is we track our actuaries, our numbers. We know how long it takes to put someone in a home and then we plan, you know, for six times that and have that set aside so that we know we're going to be okay. So you're doing a good job. It'll be great. You'll see it happen. <laughs> totally. It'll feel good. I can't wait. Gain some confidence <laughs> yeah. and um, feel a lot more comfort with this rodeo because it's first time for you guys. Congratulations, well, by the you. way. Like, we're very excited you. to be on this journey with you and until definitely learn from you and your team. It's you guys are welcome. You guys are wonderful, wonderful. I can just tell from our experience we've had in the event. Let me ask you, um, we had you guys on stage yesterday, smashing a watch, representing your commitment to get your life back, get your time back. What was the meaning that you placed on that watch when you broke it? She broke it. We better ask I her that. pretty much <laughs> smashed it. Um, yeah, yeah, by the way, Stephanie didn't just like <laughs> whack it. She didn't gently tap it. She went and went, Bam, 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 bam. I'm like, go big or wow. go home. Right? Yeah. And then everyone else said that. No one's ever done that before. Right. Man, you beat the snot out of that watch. Right. What was the meaning for you in like this commitment, where you're at in your life and what you want for your future? I think it was just like pushing through the fears involved with this. This is new stuff and it is scary. Like we're putting a lot of hard work money in it yeah. and there is risk that it's all just going to go away. That's just a reality. Yeah. Probably not probable, but it is possible. So like breaking the watch is just like, you know what? I'm just going to like, we're doing it. Like we're just going to push through, even though it's yeah a lot of time in the watch that we've put into this. Yeah. Um, just going to do it anyway. And it's like, go big. I don't know. Yeah. I'll tell you something. There's a lot of people who will watch videos, they'll subscribe, they'll learn and learn and learn, right. they'll read books, 
but they never get to the point of execution and taking action because you know what, that's the hardest part. Some people have an excuse that, well, I don't have as much money as I want for that. Some people have the money and their biggest excuse really is they're afraid what happens if they lose it. Right. And mm -hmm. I, so I'm glad that you feel such a strong connection to the responsibility of money, understanding where it comes from and how it should be used. And feel privileged and honored that we get to be a part of creating greater wealth together. Right. I'm really excited for both of you guys. You're Thank wonderful. You. And um, one last question for those that are watching this. From having had all your money in the stock market, 401ks, more traditional things, how do you feel having diversified some of that now into real estate? Do you feel more balanced or is there more fear? I would say more balanced. Responsible. You know, it's you're always taught from a little kid, never put all of your eggs in one basket. Right. And then you get into the workforce, they're telling you to put all of your eggs in one basket. It's Good complete point, opposite. <laughs> yeah, it is totally opposite, right. isn't it? Right. Wow, thank you so much. Dude, powerful words of wisdom. Uh, by the way, they gave me one last piece of wisdom. They said, Chris, you have four kids? We have four kids. And I said, I'm getting baby hungry. She said, time get a, a dog. Puppy. Time yeah. for a chocolate puppy. Chocolate lab. Like, you know what? I think it's time for a chocolate lab because oh, I love those babies. Yeah. All right, you guys. Thank you both so much. And thank you guys so much for watching this video. If you're not a subscriber, do that. More importantly, make sure that you also smash that like button. It tells YouTube that this information is worthy for others to see and hear. Helps us grow and share this message to help empower other people with knowledge and wisdom experience of others on options that are out there that they may not be aware of. So if you subscribe, we will see you on tomorrow's video. And there is a link below for you to learn more about the event that these two wonderful people are attending. You can also get a copy of my book for free demonstrating the path that they're on on how to build wealth. So guys, thank you so much for being here. Thank you guys as well. We'll see you on tomorrow's video.